All right, my connection is getting checked, and hopefully we can have a good show. We are live. Good afternoon, everyone. BC here on the 24th of December, so I can say Merry Christmas to many of you across the globe. Um, yeah, that's my daughter right there next to me, smiling. And uh, we are near the mountains. We're near Mount Baldy, so we're halfway up there. There's some people down here playing soccer. Hello, Civic Type 35, Jim Dog. Good afternoon. Chandra Jong, hello, hello Amir. And for those of you on YouTube, thank you so much for joining us on this opportunity to use that platform for an archive moment on the BC Tech Tuesday. This is our hundred and wow, I think it was our hundred and thirteenth episode back to back. Overland history, good afternoon, Merry Christmas, Mr. Deuce, good seeing you. Um forty seven Joe greetings. Hi R thirty five. I'm doing great. Piss the F off. Hope it, hope everything is well with you on this wonderful day. And I'm here near the mountains. That's my daughter. So I'm taking my children up to the mountains and had to come and interact with you, all of you guys, on this lovely Christmas Eve. Happy holidays to you, Avery. Hello, Electric Donuts. Greetings. Hello, Roberto. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Ken. Ken's Racing Engines. Hope all is well with you, Roach, and the team. Hello, son of pain. I know it's funny. <laughs> My daughter loves me so much. Subscribe anyway. to the channel and like, and hit the notification bell. Yeah, she said. If you're new, <laughs> you can also do the same thing. Okay, say hello to Jesus Jesa seventy. Good afternoon. You're Merry Christmas, Christmas all the way from France. Hello, Chris. France. Good seeing you. The temperature here is not so bad. It's like forty-three degrees cool. Celsius. Very cool. So it's pretty cold indeed. Cool. Hello, John Burr Ravs. Merry Christmas to you as well, E. Michael. Merry Christmas. Um, happy holidays to you and the family as well, Chris. And speaking of family, yeah, so Kira is asking, are you my future driver? Yes. Okay, so she said, yeah, she's going to be a future driver. Uh, Merry Some Christmas indeed. Say I want, that I'm, I'm going to be a movie star when I grow up. Yeah, people say she's going to be a movie star. My priest. Okay, that's fantastic. Even my mom. Merry Christmas to you, Miglia. Good seeing you. Thank you so much. So, guys, um, once again, this is a great time to reflect on the year and look forward to the next year. Yes. And this year for me was one... One moment, honey. One moment, please. This year was one that was great reflection as well. Um, for me, it was a great opportunity to explore new horizons in terms of mobility and speed. It was also a great opportunity to think about some of the I'm things that come right with success. Back. Oh, thank you so much, hon. Walk safely. She's going to take off and go downhill a little bit. Anyway, nonetheless... I'm talking about uh, opportunities and success. Being that person that we needed when we were younger is what I've strived to be. That's why I do this Tech Tuesday every Tuesday. Trying to give that opportunity to do great things and give back to the country and community that's done so much for me. On the same token, it comes with a lot of people who are naysayers. And I've seen a lot of that recently, especially with the new project that we built that was EV in nature. We have some people who are extremely excited and a few people who are quite upset. And it gets to not liking the platform to calling names, which is not very pleasant. But nonetheless, it's, it's great. Oh, thank you so much, Son of Pain. Appreciate that. Hello, Shell. Good afternoon. Good seeing you. Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you, Civic. Appreciate that. Um, a bit nervous about tomorrow? Well, don't be. Don't be. Please. Uh, hopefully, I'll be, everything will go well with you. Patty Rock says, love my work. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas as well. GT Powders. Greetings. John Miller, John Marrell, Joma Relier, hello as well. I do like Super Mike 4. Um, hello, Bintis. <laughs> Welcome to the Internet Hate Machine. It's okay, Marky Mark. I'm used to it. There is something to be said, and I really mean this, guys. There's something to be said with someone who consumes your content, looks at the beautiful project you build, and have something not so positive to say. That means something's going on with their life. And many times you see me say things like thank you or gratitude or you know what, whatever you're going through, I hope you get past it. There's something going on. It, I see things I don't like. You know, I may see someone's project card that's not quite my taste, but I can respect the effort that goes into it. I can see some, you know, forms of mobility that I was closed-minded to, which EV was one of them. But I stayed open-minded, which is great. And on the same token, you know, there are people who offend me by trying to give people second chances to make amends. And if not, I move forward. All off 9-11. Best wishes to you as well. The one thing I've learned after all these years is not to take things personally. Um, whenever someone says bad things at you, they point and say bad things, three fingers are pointing back at them. Something is wrong in their life. So if anything, have empathy with them. Don't, don't get upset. Don't challenge them. Have empathy. And that's what I do nowadays. 
Alfie from up north. Merry Christmas as well, brother. Thank you so much. What is the maximum amount of boost that you've made on pump gas? Well, it depends on the turbo size. And I'll tell you this. So on a larger 72 millimeter turbo, the most I've done on pure pump gas 91 has been close to maybe 13 PSI. I'm being very honest with you. Before I start getting knock sensor because of the amount of air that's being flowed. But on a smaller baby turbo, when you look at something like a T25 size turbo, we've done 26 PSI. So it doesn't have to do with the boost itself. It has to do with how much airflow is being pushed by the turbo, how much you can cool that airflow down to prevent pre-ignition. Because when you start pre-igniting and knocking and get into the knock limitation of the fuel, that's where you stop. And start looking for ways to add some kind of octane booster, either via water methanol, a higher um, uh, anti-knock agent, or maybe even a fuel that is more knock prone not to knock, I should say. Knock inhibited. Yeah? In Canada, you have 94. You guys are very fortunate. In California, we call it urine. We call it piss. We have 91 octane, which is a limitation. But nonetheless, it's been great having opportunity to play around with water methanol or E85, which is becoming more and more popular. Aaron says, people are stuck. Let me see what he says. People are stuck in the past. Like new Honda people didn't like because no VTEC and the super all talk and look at the sales. Yeah, you're right. So one thing that people want change, they say, but on the same token, they're resilient to change, which is interesting. So I think someone, uh, Mark for soup. Oh, thank you so much. I see you sent me something interesting. Um, yes, water methanol, Mark and Mark is absolutely correct. It is a proper octane booster and it is actually technology from World War II. That's when getting good fuel for planes were very hard to come by, so water and methanol was a way to increase the anti-knock properties of a fuel to allow these fighter jets to continue to perform even though good fuel was scarce. Fast forward to today, with the advancements in technology in terms of nozzle designs, we now have a finer mist and distribution issues are not as crazy as they used to be, and it's a more cost-effective way for you to add anti-knock properties to a fuel without having to worry about range anxiety, and that happens to me if I'm traveling in a region of California where I don't have access to E85, I get anxiety. So that being said, having a flex fuel setup in my ECU allows me to put that at bay. But when that's not available, definitely like my blue Porsche, like this one right here that I'm wearing, that one has two 500cc nozzles using water methanol and 91 octane. And, and I make 850 horsepower all day. My 2017 VTEC has it. <laughs> well, you know what? You may find interesting TMOC. On the Earth Rings projects, especially with the Odysseys, Honda's done something very interesting. They now use VTEC to deactivate cylinders. Yes, not as a power adder, but a way to initiate deactivating cylinders to increase efficiency and reduce gas consumption. Something to think about. Are you ever going to do an S2000 build like your wagon? It totally depends on American Honda. So what a lot of people don't know is that American Honda is a big partner for us. Um, they are one of the entities that spearheads our crazy Honda project. So they were a big supporter of the wagon, both the first version of D16 and also the new Wago van. We even got legal involved in that build. And the Odyssey, of course, was a commission from Honda, the CRZ, commission from Honda, the HRV, commission from Honda, the Accord that we built with Nitrous, commission from Honda. Um, even my Insight had a lot of support from American Honda, our drag race car. And even fast forward to some of the new projects where we built two fits, you know, GK fits, that was from Honda as well. So if we end up building something with an S2000, it'll have to be something where Honda was actively involved and wanted us to do something really old school to mix it up, you know? What kind of water mix do you prefer? Is it dependent on your base fuel octane? You could get away with really something really nasty like an 87 and add a water methanol. But the mix I use, I tend to use 50% by volume, 50-50 of deionized water and laboratory grade methanol, which is very cost effective. You can get it for like three, four gallons. I mean, three, four dollars a gallon. It's very cost effective. Happy holidays to you. I am cold, TFT. I'm near my body. <laughs> it's freezing here. I have my diesel jacket and scarf and my KW beanie. And I'm taking the family out for the holidays to the mountains where we expect to see some snow. That's the great thing about Southern California. We have everything. I mean, where I reside, I reside in like what is known as the 
I would say the San Gabriel Valley. I'm an hour from the beach, an hour from the desert, an hour from the snow. It's pretty convenient. Help me with the Seahawks build, daily driven FG4. That's what we do. So we help enthusiasts like yourself do wonderful things. So that being said, kindly write to us at sales at bcmo.com and we see what we can do to help you out. <laughs> Why is the US Octane rating lower in the UK? For example, VPAR 99 in the UK is common. Well, that may be a bis bit of a misunderstanding, my good friend, Abarth 500C. Because in the United States, we tend to, how should I say? designate our octane ratings differently from you do in the UK. So in the UK what I notice when I go out there is that they have fuels that are designated by what is known as research numbers. Okay? And with a research number that's where if you're in a controlled environment and you have ideal temperatures and pressures in that environment and an engine in a controlled environment you try and induce knock into that engine in a lab. And whatever that knock value property is that's what you assign the fuel. Here in the U.S., we do what is called R plus M divided by 2, and that's an average of research and motor octane. And not only do you have the capability of doing the same research information that you would do in a field in a controlled lab, you also go and do field testing with a motor and try and induce knock as well. Whatever octane rating is assigned to your motor in the field and motor in the lab, you add those and divide by 2 and get an average. So 91 octane may not really be 91 research. It could be 99 and 80. 80 in the field, 99 in the lab, but in the UK, since they look at research numbers alone, that's the designation. Doesn't mean it's a better fuel, it's just a different way of rating it. Hope that makes sense. Um, where am I, says Urparse. I am uh, halfway up Mount Baldy. So, today, I didn't go to work, I gave the team time off, and I decided to spend time with my children and take them up to the mountains, which is pretty cool, right? So that being said, that's what I'm doing, spending time with the family and making sure the kids can experience some snow, which I see a little bit up top on the mountains over there, you know? Thanks for being a badass, says Engineer Diecast. Keep doing your thing. Merry Christmas. Thank you for the kind words. Merry Christmas to you as well. Frank from Downstar. So for those of you who don't know Frank, great enthusiast, been in the industry for a while. I did a Tech Tuesday at his facility last week. Take a look at it. It's archived on YouTube. He also has his own Downstar channel where he does great podcasts, both visual and also via voice only, with many different business people, influential people, and really interesting community individuals. So he is the reason why I have Tech Tuesday. He introduced me to the entire platform and recently just introduced me to TikTok. So Frank, thanks so much. I joined TikTok yesterday, did my first couple of posts, got 70 followers already, which is great. And if you guys are not seeing Tip Talk, by all means, go there. It's pretty cool. And he says that my podcast drops on Thursday, so we look forward to that, you know? What car did I take up to the mountains, says Mark Four Soup. Great question. Now, here's the thing. I have a variety of cars in my arsenal at the office. I have the Viper. I have the minivan. I have Porsches, Mercedes-Benzes, uh, Cayennes, um, Caymans. Quite a few vehicles there. But you know what I chose to drive today to the mountains? A front-wheel drive Hyundai Ioniq. So it's an economical vehicle, a hybrid. Um, gets about 50 miles per gallon in the trim that I have it in right now. And I chose it because in slippery conditions, believe it or not, front-wheel drives reign supreme. If I took one of my rear-wheel drive applications, I'll slip and slide everywhere. If I took my wagon, I don't have a heater in it. <laughs> so that wouldn't work. So it is the most comfortable, most slippery surface friendly vehicle that I have. Tox Pharmacist, thumb up to you as well. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, says Turbo 86C. Merry Christmas and a happy new year as well. Cheers. That's awesome, says Uy Parse. Enjoy it with your family. Thank you so much. And you know what? That is a perfect segue. I will excuse myself and go ahead and join my afternoon with the family, but I will be back once again We'll post this up on YouTube in a day or so. We'll be back in the office on Thursday. I'll come on on Christmas and say hi to all of you guys. And then you know what? I'm going to go head up the mountains right now. You can listen to our interaction, especially on the fuels and everything we discussed, on all the different podcasts that we have access to. Anchor, Radio Public, Spotify. Just search for Bisimoto and it comes up and you can listen to us indeed. Thanks, everyone. Have a great one. See you soon. And... Join me on TikTok. Take care. Cheers.
Hey Africa, peace in. Bye bye.